If you want a gaming PC that you can build as quick as possible, as easy as possible, you don't want to wait long for shipping and you don't want to patiently wait for the deals, I got you covered. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. The parts inside this Amazon Prime only gaming PC can be shipped to your door within one or two day shipping, and they all have consistent prices and are available today with the links down in the description. In today's video, first we'll start with covering every single part inside this gaming PC build and why I chose them. After that, I'll list off some alternative parts for you to use if in the future one of these aren't in stock, then we'll be benchmarking it with 10 different games. And finally, of course, we'll be sprinkling in some Headshot Quad gaming clips to prove that you can dominate online titles with this gaming PC. Before getting deeper into this build though, we gotta give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by MMORC.com, a key reseller website that I teamed up with because they're offering the cheapest Windows 10 keys that I've seen so far, as well as a ton of other software keys. MMORC is offering you guys a super exclusive sale on the Windows 10 keys. Click that first link in the description and select add to cart, click place order, paste in the exclusive AF coupon code ZAH35, and that'll give you a massive 35% discount dropping the price to under $10. After that, select your payment method and complete your order. Once you get the key, click start on your PC and type in activate, press enter, change product key, paste in the key, and there you go, activated Windows 10 for less than 10 bucks. Once again, feel free to head down to the links in the description and use that exclusive 35% off coupon code ZAH35. All right, so starting with the top of the parts list, we have the CPU, and once again, here on the ZTT build guides, I'm using this $120 Ryzen 3 3100 which is a four core and eight threaded am4 beast speaking of beast sit down you too and this CPU is rocking a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz and a max boost clock of up to 3.9 gigahertz. The reason why I'm using this CPU so much lately is because at its always available $120 price range, there's just no other CPU on the market right now that can beat it in terms of price to performance. And on top of that, you're getting yourself invested into a system that has a ton of upgrade potential for the future. Next up, we have the motherboard. And now this is the only used product we have on the list today. And this is the Gigabyte A320M S2H. But the reason why I'm using this as a used part is because I picked it up on Amazon Warehouse, which did indeed include the Prime two-day shipping. If you guys are following me over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash ZaxTechTurf, by the way, where I've been streaming every Tuesday and Thursday, you would already know that we've been sniping some pretty good motherboard deals over there, like this one, which only costs us $48. Now, if this isn't available on Amazon Warehouse whenever you're looking for it, I think the new price is only a few bucks more, around $60, and there's certainly some other A320 boards that you can grab for a similar price as well. This A320 is only rocking two RAM slots, which is really the only thing I'm not a huge fan of, but if you purchase a proper RAM kit, you really shouldn't need to upgrade it for a very long time. Speaking of which, for this build, I decided on the YOLO 2x8GB kit, which I've definitely featured multiple times now. It's clocked at 3000 megahertz, and it's always available for just over 50 bucks. I haven't had a single issue when using this RAM kit, and I definitely like the all black and clean design to it, which is perfect for a nice, simple, and clean build like this one. Next up is the graphics card, and this here is the XFX RX 574GB model, which which is definitely common to see in any of these brand new $450 to $550 gaming PC build guides. An RX 570 is definitely powerful enough in 1080p, especially if you're really only interested in eSport titles. Not like that guy. I mean, look, I have zero problems owning people here in Valorant. It's kind of, honestly, it's kind of too easy. RX 570 might be a little... OP to be honest. At around $140, there's honestly not that many other options to go with here. You could potentially squeeze out more of your budget on the GPU with something like a 1650 Super if you lowered your CPU budget, but I'll provide what a build like that would look like here in a few minutes. Next up is our storage, and for this $500 gaming PC, I simply set the goal of hitting around a 500 gigabyte SSD for as cheap as possible, and I ended up grabbing this Silicone Power 512 gigabyte model for just $47. This is a 2.5 inch drive with average SATA SSD speeds and no DRAM, but honestly for these budget gaming PC builds, something like this will work perfectly fine for you. Following that we have the case, and now in my opinion this is what makes this build special. This is the Masterbox MB320L, and if done right, this case can make PC flippers a lot of money in the next year or so. This MB320L has consistently been in stock on Amazon for exactly $60, and it comes with two ARGB fans in the front, a nice PSU shroud to hide your cables, and even a proper tempered glass side panel, which is just absolutely 
perfect for flipping gaming PCs. You can throw pretty much whatever parts you want in here, even ketchup and mustard PSU cables like we have in this one, and this will make any budget gaming PC look good enough to sell pretty quickly in your local market. This did not include a rear exhaust fan though, so I did throw a random black fan that I had laying around, so do be aware of that if you're thinking about picking this one up. And finally, we do unfortunately have to loop back to the ketchup and mustard cables. This is the EVGA 500 watt W1 power supply, which is available on Amazon Prime for around $47. To be honest, the main reason I picked this one up specifically was because I already bought it from EVGA V-Stock for $25, and I saw that it was readily available on Amazon Prime. This will work perfectly fine for this build, and it's rated tier D, but you guys know that I'm not a big fan of these ugly cables, so I don't want to keep talking about it. And then although my power supply cables are super ugly, I have no problems owning here in Valorant. And here's what the final parts list is looking like. And as you can see, with everything straight from Amazon Prime with one to two day shipping, you'd be looking at spending just over our target $500 mark for the entire build. In my opinion, this is a lot of PC for just $500, especially considering that none of these parts were on deals. But if you were looking to stretch your budget just a bit farther, I do have an alternate parts list for you guys. On one of my Twitch live streams, I hosted a PC part picker competition, which was a ton of fun, by the way. And this here is the winning submission for the $500 contest where they could use more websites than just Amazon Prime and shout out to Ditto for putting this one together. For $500, he decided to go with the i3-9100F route with an H310 motherboard. There's still 16 gigabytes of RAM and a budget 500 gigabyte SSD in there, but he managed to squeeze out a four gigabyte GTX 1650 Super, which is awesome. What also won him the competition was getting the Montec X1 case in this build. This compares pretty evenly in terms of aesthetics to my Masterbox MB320L in my opinion, but yeah, this system from Ditto is certainly another one to consider as well if you aren't limiting yourself to just Amazon Prime like I did. With that being said, it's now time for the benchmarks, and of course you know we had to kick things off with Fortnite. With the Fortnite Guad himself and in 1080p and Pro settings, this $500 build was able to crank out an impressive 190 frames per second, and that 1% low stayed nice and high at 96. Alright, it is Fortnite time. You may have seen in the last video that I got my first ever dub, and it Looks like we're uh, starting the same way off on this one. Oh boy, we got Paul Walker, Fast and the Furious here. Ooh, ooh, might have been too soon on that one. Oh boy. Needs a, oh, excuse me, sir. This guy trying to run me over. Hello, oh, it's Iron Man. Welcome to the game, Iron Man, although you're dead. Is that a person right there? Oh my God, it is. Wow, what an idiot. Wow, that guy sucked. I don't even think that was a bot. All right, so we died a little early during that last match. Only got like top 30 or so, so it's time for some redemption. Oh man, we're in the top 25 already. That was quick. Oh, let's see if this guy wants some top 25 action. Okay, nope, he didn't. Sit down. Oh man, we got somebody up above us. This, this might not be good. Oh, he's right behind me. He's right behind me. Sit down. 20th place. That's not bad. That's not bad. After that, I absolutely had to throw in the new Crisis Remastered. There's even a built-in benchmark tool that came with this, but I couldn't get it to run on lower medium settings, so I had to settle on high settings for whatever reason. Not sure what that's about, to be honest. And this here could only crank out 39 FPS. This benchmark is super weird, as you can see. It goes through really fast and choppy, but I hadn't really given it much time in my studio yet, so maybe I'll start benchmarking this one in the future with some actual gameplay. Following that was Rainbow Six Siege, and using its much better built-in benchmarking tool in 1080p and very high settings, we got a 185 FPS average. Valorant was up after that. The Valorant God himself really enjoys benchmarking this one in all of these build guides lately. And in 1080p and medium settings, I got 207 frames per second, which was definitely enough to headshot some noobs. Valorant sniping time, baby. Let's go. <clears throat> all right, maybe we can have a little bit better of a start. I was definitely just trolling, by the way. Let's see, <laughs> I. I still got it, all right? Because see, now it's time to get serious, okay? All right? We're not messing around today, I'm telling you. We got someone coming up behind me too, watch. I'm not playing. I'm not playing today. Sit down. We are not playing today. I'm telling you, man. Not playing. I'm definitely feeling the multi-kill. There's one. Oh, I tried to no-scope him. I'm going to no-scope him. Watch this. Oh, of course. Maybe I should focus on the no-scopes. Oh, no-scope god confirmed. Another one? Okay, that was kind of easy. Maybe one more? Sit down. You sit down, and then I'm going to no-scope. Oh, nope. I'll get him too. There's another one. 
sit down. Next up is Borderlands 3. I really like including this one because the built-in benchmarking tool really stresses that GPU and in 1080p medium settings, I got comfortably over the target 60 FPS mark with an FPS average of 70. Far Cry New Dawn was up after that. Still just including this one because you guys requested it. So make sure you continue to let me know if you wanna see something different. And in 1080p and medium settings, I got 74 FPS. Looping back to another eSport title, we have CSGO and in 1080p and pro settings, I got an obnoxious 251 frames per second. CS go time. Let's see what we're capable of doing today. Yes, I do know that that last guy was a bot. That guy wasn't though. Oh, is this guy a bot? Yep, still killed him though. Oh my God, I just missed a bot. There I got him, bot killing Gord. Bot killing Gord. Another one? Oh no, I missed the bot. A bot just killed me. It's all good, I got this under, wow. Got this under control. Oh, I need the scope. Worth it. Might need the scope. Yep. I think there's somebody coming up around. Yep. Not anymore. Missed. Don't miss twice in a row, man. Never have, never will. Oh, <laughs> tough landing. Where'd he go? I lost him. Oh, there he is. He's dead. Chicken. You did. Sir, come back here. Sir. Sir. Oh my goodness. Sir. Hey. Uh Sir, I'm gonna have to ask you to sit down. Oh my God, sir, sir, please, please sit down. Are you serious? Sir, sit down. That's how we do it. Next up was Madden NFL 21. For all of my fellow sports fans out there and in 1080p and high settings, I got a very high 164 FPS average, but it's a shame I haven't been able to dedicate enough time to building up this Madden Ultimate Team roster yet. Following that was Apex Legends. Now this one is by far the most requested benchmark that you guys have made over the last couple of months, other than Rust, mind you, and in 1080p and medium settings, I got 118 FPS. And finally for our last gaming benchmark, there's no way we're leaving out Call of Duty Modern Warfare out of this testing run. And here in 1080p and medium settings during normal multiplayer and not warzone i got 102 fps all right and now we're at call of duty time let's see what we can do maybe a snipe or two i think i'm thinking a snipe oh there's one all right i'm not gonna lie that was a pretty solid start to call of duty let's see if we can continue with the i mean should i continue to snipe in these videos or should i just make it easier on myself oh never mind it's still pretty easy Got him. I mean, this is easy, baby. Too easy. Oh, there he is. Sit down. He's down. Dude, I'm just making all of these guys sit down. It's all day. Last kill of the game? Oh, there it is. The victory pleasure is all mine, everybody. I'll finish it off. Hope you all enjoyed that gameplay footage. Just like always, I did include a 3D Mark Times by Benchmark just for a consistent comparison from build to build. And here, this $500 gaming PC cranked out a score of 4,014. As you can see, this $500 Amazon Prime only gaming PC cranks out some serious FPS and 1080p gaming on any title you throw at it. And I hope this provided some of you with value if you're looking to jump into PC gaming as soon as possible. There are definitely a ton of ways to save money by being patient and sniping the good deals in your local area or even on online websites, but don't let all of that detract you for getting up and running if you simply just want to start gaming as soon as possible with the $500 gaming PC. If you're looking to build your own, then feel free to head on over to our ZTT Discord community where we have a community builds channel and a weekly contest. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell if you want to see more build guide videos just like this one. And finally, I hope you enjoyed this video. One more thing before you guys leave, sit down and you sit down too. Just all of you, please sit down.